Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, my name is David K. Martin and you are now listening to the Maple Leaf Wrestling History Podcast, the world's first true north wrestling podcast. And because this show is powered by Red Circle, I want to offer you fine folks the opportunity to have your demands fulfilled in audio form. So as I make my way through history unearthing various facts, stats, feds, and matches, I want to lay it down for you guys like this. If you donate any sum of money to this show, literally anything, I will do a show on any Canadian related subject matter of discussion you want to hear. So if you aren't feeling what I have to say right Right now or you want to skip ahead of the timelines or perhaps you would either prefer a character bio or a specific match or show review done you want a book review done you want me to review a benoit omega or phil lafon match in japan fuck it done all this and more could be yours at maple leaf wrestling history remember all donations are measured equally in god's eyes and you can find the show on youtube or any of your podcast gimmicks now back to our regularly scheduled program Hey everybody, this is Sam with Wrestling Overtime, and we're going to talk Impact Wrestling, specifically the Slammiversity uh, that happened on April 18th. You're going to get my Raisin Rants. I had planned on doing one great big news and update show, and then I thought, no, I want to break Slammiversary and WWE's uh, extreme rules pay-per-views out of news and updates because I know some of you don't want to listen to it and may want to fast forward through just impact or just WWE and so I just want to give you the actual news and updates when we do that particular episode but let's talk uh, impact wrestling I want to continue to think the right um the fan that wrote in and said, Sam, you, you've got to start watching Impact Wrestling. And like I told you before, I didn't care to give it a try, but just for the simple fact, I knew Tessa Blanchard was there, Sammy Callahan, and Ken Chamrock. And I like all three of them. Well, if you've been watching it, then you know that those three haven't really been part of big storylines or in Tesla Blanchard's case haven't even been around and ended up getting fired so I think all of my friends that are that are wrestling fans thought well Sam's gonna give up on this quick and I'm going to tell you no I I am really enjoying Impact Wrestling um I think right now I'm enjoying AEW and NXT the most, but I think that Impact Wrestling is above both WWE Raw and SmackDown right now for enjoyment. Um, Their storylines move. They actually have a purpose, and the things that they want to be funny actually end up being funny, and the things that are supposed to be serious kind of end up being serious so I I really am enjoying this promotion and am glad that I picked it up and, and started watching it now I was really looking forward to June 18th as far as this particular pay-per-view of course they had been promoing plugging that they were going to have a lot of returning stars to impact but also some new people but they were going to be recognizable people to us and I heard all kinds of rumors of who they were going to be and a lot of them were WWE superstars that I had followed in WWE so I was kind of excited Um, but they kind of opened it up with the Motor City Machine Guns coming back uh, Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley. Now, I actually had seen them in Ring of Honor, and of course, I don't. I don't know if you can be a wrestling fan and not know Chris Sabin and the impact that he's had. Um, how he has traveled around to different promotions. He's kind of a fan favorite, almost no matter where he goes. And so, even though they weren't one of the returning WWE stars that, you know, a lot of people wanted to see, 
I was excited when they came out to answer the Rascals Open Challenge because I'll be honest with you, I haven't been very um, enamored or, you know, really thought much of the Rascals. Trey isn't bad, but I mean, they've their gimmick is a little stale. They, they've got to find a new way to promote that or they're going to have to change their, their gimmick or, or kind of slide it some way or something like that. I was glad that the motor, uh, motor city machine guns actually won. This is their first time teaming together since 2018. And then it was announced that, you know, they were going to take on whoever won the championship on Tuesday night. And so I was real excited about them getting back in to the tag team titles. Maybe a little fast as far as, you know, getting them back in it, but um was excited to see them. And as I told you, um, I guess two weeks ago, that there were rumors out there that he Slater was going uh, to be appearing in Impact. He sure did. Now, they only called him Heath. So, of course, that always makes me wonder, what did WWE do? Did they trademark Slater? Because I know Heath Slater's real name, I believe it's Heath Miller. And, I mean, did they trademark Keith Slater and they're not going to give it to him like they've done to poor Cody. So they only called him Heath. He said that, you know, he was late to answer the Rascals open challenge. So now he basically wanted in the Impact World uh, Championship match since they had said that there was going to be a mystery wrestler. Now, I'm me, I don't know, um, I guess he has been in the WWE too long where they kind of throw things at you at the last minute. Impact Wrestling, they usually don't do that. So I'm sure that they already had their mystery wrestler lined up, and um, Heath wasn't in. But anyway, um, they uh, sent Rohit Raju to come out and interrupt him and he basically told him you know he wasn't getting a title shot before he himself was he didn't take too kind of that and hit him with a neck breaker well then we see Rhino come out Rhino's the reason that I thought that Heath was coming to Impact Wrestling because he keeps making comments that you know he needs a partner that's that's got some kids. And, of course, we all know that that was his catch line in WWE. So while they're, they're reuniting and, and kind of talking, S- Scott Demore comes out. And he tells Heath, dude, you got to leave. You, you don't have a contract here. You're not under contract, and you got to get out. Well... Of course, that immediately, you guys know that I am a literal person, and and I want to live in my wrestling bubble, but I can't help but pop it every once in a while. I immediately think, he's not under contract. What do you mean? Aren't you testing for COVID-19? How did he pass the test? How did he get in here? Did he climb through a window? Did Rhino sneak him in in his bag? You know, what is the explanation for that? In the world we live in today, of course we know they're lining up and getting tested. And so how did he get in there? But anyway, back in my wrestling bubble, um, of course we had three different title changes with uh, Chris Bay defeating Willie Mike for the X Division Championship after he raked Willie Mike's eyes uh, and the referee didn't see it and then he hit his final finesse. You know, Willie Mike held this belt 
for I think it was 92 days, 91 days, they said, um, I feel like he really didn't do anything with it. I I know a lot of people think that he is, you know, a very good up and coming star. I don't think that I necessarily agree with that. I don't see that star material in him. And, you know, at first I thought, oh, it's his gimmick. You know, I, that's what I don't like. I'm, I'm thinking he's not a star and it's his gimmick. No, no, I, I, I think it's the whole package as far as I don't really care for his wrestling and, and his movements and stuff like that. So I was pretty excited that Chris Bay, you know, won this match. And then, as I called it, um, Deanna Perrazzo uh, got Jordan Grace to submit. And she won the Knockouts Championship. Do I think this one is too fast? Yeah, yeah, um, a little bit. I know that the Impact Wrestling fans are familiar with her. I know wrestling fans are familiar with her from, you know, her being with the WWE and coming by. But... I really thought it was weird that she jumped the line, basically, to get a title shot, and then she wins it right off the bat. However, I am kind of glad that she won it. I like her. I like her style. I like her gimmick. I think she will be fresh new blood for Impact Wrestling on the women's side of things. And like I said last week, she has got a lot of different feuds that she can go in and out of and play different characters and go back and forth between heel and babyface. And I talked a little bit last week about what exactly are they going to have her as? Are they going to have her as a heel? Are they going to have her as a baby face? I told you my thoughts on it last week as far as I kind of wanted her to play it on the line for right now. And I thought a good opportunity for that would have been for Susie to bring in um, her character and win the gauntlet match so that those two could go up each other, go go against each other, whereas Deanna could, you know, play good girl to Susie's bad image, but when she's Susie, then Deanna could be um, the heel and I really thought that that could have been a really interesting way to start her off in Impact. However, Impact Wrestling knows a lot more than I do, I'm sure. And she's going to go up against Kylie Ray, who was the winner of the gauntlet match. Am I shocked that Kylie Ray won the gauntlet match? When I sit down and think about it, no. I mean, they've really been pushing her and jamming her down our throats uh, with Miss Sunshine. But I, she's got to show me more. Um, right now, I just feel, feel like she's a little green, and I don't know that she can carry a long-term program. And they haven't announced when this championship match actually will be, whether they're going to hold it off to the next pay-per-view or, or what exactly they're going to do. So uh, I'm a little interested in that. Then we got um, Eddie Edwards being the new Impact Champion um, after pinning Ace Austin. I know I read a lot on the internet, on Reddit, on, heard a lot on podcasts that people were really wanting Ace Austin to win the belt. Um, like I told you guys last week, I feel like Ace Austin and Trey are too young, too green, to really carry the number one, the face of Impact Wrestling. I don't, I don't think that anyone would take them serious. And I think that if Impact Wrestling would have made that mistake, they would have had to switch it more over to Moose being the TNA heavyweight champion. So I'm really glad that they went with 
Eddie Edwards, and I like, you know, that the Good Brothers showed up. I like that the mystery wrestlers ended up being two surprises. It ended up being Rich Swan coming back off his injury, and Eric Young. And I really think Eric Young is the one that's going to add some stability to this particular program, this particular battle. Um, I look for Ace Austin and Trey kind of take a back seat to all these newcomers. And I look for them to drop down to the X division. And honestly, I really look for Ace Austin to be the one that beats Chris Bay, probably at Bound for Glory, and let some of these new guys and Eddie Edwards, Moose, you know, get involved in uniting, unifying the the heavyweight championship level and the belts and everything. Uh, of course, I kind of already gave it away. Moose won against Tommy Dreamer, and the North won. Uh, really were, wasn't expecting either one of them to lose, although Tommy Dreamer did give Moose uh, a really, really good battle. However, at the end of it, I think we were all waiting to see who had been in the hoodie watching TV and drinking. Um, I really thought it was going to end up being Eric Young. I thought that's, you know, how they were going to reveal it and everything. But basically, they showed EC3. Um, he threw the glass that he was drinking out of at the wall and it displayed the Roman numeral three. So you guys can lay all of the AEW rumors to rest. EC3 is coming to Impact Wrestling and going to make himself known. I look for him quickly to get into the championship title pitcher he is hungry and I can't help it he was done wrong in WWE the kid had everything going for him he has the look he can cut a promo the kid can talk I mean um Impact Wrestling is going to do wonders with them and they're going to climb in the ratings because of it and they're going to probably get some more eyes on them and liking them like I did because of EC3 and so I can't wait to see that I'm assuming that they will definitely be deb debuting him at least in a promo on Tuesday night um, I don't see them having him wrestle on Tuesday night but I think that he will get in that picture soon the Good Brothers also announced that, you know, they signed with Impact Wrestling and they're going to also have a contract with New Japan and going to be going back and forth, you know, when they can. I am excited also to have Carl Anderson and uh, Luke Gallows back for the simple fact that they are good, hard workers that understand the business, understand how to get over, how to get a crowd to like them, and they're safe. And I really think this young uh, tag team division will do good to have, you know, the Motor City Machine Gunners and the Good Brothers kind of holding the tag teams together and teaching them the ropes. I, I, I think Impact, we're going to see over the next six months, just really fly. And I know that Vince McMahon had to drop some of these people off of his payroll. He never should have signed them in the first place. The Good Brothers should have left when they had the chance. But, of course, they couldn't turn down that kind of money. But the thing of it is Vince McMahon had to lower his payroll. Like I said, it never should have been that high to begin with. But I think he is going to regret some of the people that he let get away and how he let them get away. Um, 
doing it by text message, uh, not really talking to people who had been with your company for 15 years like Keith Slater. I think Keith Slater's going to make them pay. So I am definitely, definitely looking forward to Impact Wrestling in the future. And like I said, in the next six months, I can see it doing nothing but going up, up, up. So, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, problems, or protests, you guys need to write me at wrestlingovertime at gmail.com. Or, as always, you can hit me up on Twitter or on our Facebook page. We're under Wrestling Overtime. And let me know what you guys are thinking and, and what did you guys think of this pay-per-view and what do you guys see happening. But as always, I'm going to go back to working overtime for you, the fan, and I'll talk to you soon.